Hi there. Welcome to the channel. My name is Alana, and I'm the creator of the Health Analytic Insights Podcast, where I interview guests and talk all things health informatics. So the first role is a clinical systems analyst. And some of the job duties with a clinical system analyst might be documenting user requirements. So when the hospital wants to install a specific software or tool into their system, they might hire a third party external vendor. And so you might be a clinical systems analyst um, employed by the hospital who has knowledge of that specific software or tool. And so you can be the go between, you can be the go between between the vendor side and the clinical staff at the hospital. And so this would look like documenting user requirements, documenting issues that users have pointed out about the system back to the third party so you can resolve any issues. You might also be responsible for integrating any user feedback into the tool, as well as ongoing training for clinical staff as well. So the work-life balance of the clinical system analyst is generally quite fair, a usual nine to five, but you might have to work overtime in some situations, although this, of course, very highly dependent on the organization. The second job title that you can search up for new grads or people looking to pivot into the field is the role of the EHR analyst. And this is similar to the clinical systems analyst, but instead of you being employed by the hospital, you might be employed by the third party vendor. So for example, if the hospital is looking to implement EHR vendors such as Epic or Cerner into their hospital system, you might be hired by Epic or Cerner to actually help implement this software into the hospital. So again, this role might require you to educate clinical staff and train users, as well as help the whole implementation cycle. Again, this will require documentation, understanding users' pain points, and then communicating that back to the third-party vendor. This role might require more traveling or longer hours. It might not be a typical nine to five. So you might wanna think about that when applying for roles like this, if it best fits your personality and lifestyle. So a quick tip for new grads who just graduated from their master's in health informatics and are looking to get that first entry-level job. When I first graduated from my master's in biomedical engineering, I was really under the impression that it was gonna be so easy to find a job after all this schooling, but I truly found out um, that that was not the case. What really helped me get my first job was growing my network both in school and during school. So for instance, I attended several events. I used meetup.com, Facebook, Eventbrite to attend events that were primarily focused in health informatics and digital health and I attended an event called Hacking Health. And this event was all about people coming together from various different backgrounds um, to help solve a healthcare problem. So the team that I was on, we had people who were developers, people who had a public health background, people who were clinicians, and we all came together as one team. And in our specific case, we were trying to create a app for clinicians that they could use to discuss mental health issues. And what really stood out to me from attending this event is that it really helped me to connect with people in various backgrounds. So in my schooling, I was surrounded by people who had similar degrees to me. And so I didn't really get the variety of being able to understand different perspectives. But attending Hacking Health was a really great experience for me to grow my network from people who I might never have met. So I really give this tip for new grads, really consider attending events outside of your school and really um, continue to connect with people and grow your network because that can really be beneficial in the future. So for more tips on how to start your career in health informatics, don't forget to check the description box below where I have a free guide that you can download to getting your first job in health informatics. I have a whole bunch of tips in that guide and I really think it will help you on your journey. So let's go on to the next two roles that you can, you can search for in Indeed or LinkedIn when it comes to getting that first job. And the third role that I wanna talk about is the clinical decision support analyst. So with the clinical decision support analyst, this role might be focused on building analytical products to help guide evidence-based decisions. 
So for instance, this might look like writing SQL queries. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, which is a programming language used to manipulate and deal with databases. So it might look like you writing queries to manipulate the data in these data sets and then doing some descriptive statistics using R, Python, or SAS, and then finally visualizing your results using a whole host of visualization tools such as SSRS reports, Crystal reports, Excel, Power BI, Tableau, and or Click. This role is a good balance between using your soft skills in terms of communicating your tech uh, communicating your results to potentially a non-technical audience and using your technical skills by honing your analytical mindset as well. So the final role that I want to talk about that new grads and people looking to pivot into the field can apply to is the role of the methodologist. So this role is primarily focused on developing and analyzing research projects and the results from these research projects can help to inform evidence-based practice and help hospitals and help healthcare organizations come up with benchmarks that they can use in their organization. So for example, as a result of a literature research and several studies completed, healthcare organizations can understand what the average hospital readmission rate should be in their area and based on the size of their organization. And they can work to be well under this rate. So the role of the methodologist can be in leading this literature search and by carrying out surveys and research methods in order to come up with these results. So in addition, this role is quite heavy on the statistical analysis and individuals should be quite familiar with tools such as R or SAS to carry out statistical analysis. Again, this role is quite technical and requires a strong foundation in statistics and biostatistics. So I hope this video has given you some insight into the types of roles you can apply to within the health informatics field. Comment down below which role suits best with your interests and personality. And don't forget to download the free guide to starting your career in health informatics in the description box below. Thanks and have a wonderful day.